I think I mentioned it before that um, it looked like um, Tremaine Emery who does, um, sorry, Tremaine Emery who does the brand Denim Tears and who's also the creative director of Supreme now has decided to put together a collection honoring the late great Virgil Abloh under the term under the name sorry Pyrex Tears it obviously lends itself from Virgil's original brand that he put out called Pyrex Vision from back in the day and instead of having the 23 on it it's got the 45 which is Jordan's number when he first came back after retirement so there's a clear kind of line there and obviously them being good close friends it also makes sense too but I was very adamant that I was against this from the onset when I saw the pictures leaked of the flannel that was out, that was meant to be coming out with the 45 on the back of it, because I felt like it was a bit in poor taste, especially considering that the guy hasn't even been dead for a year yet, and they're already kind of, quote unquote, profiting off of his name. And so far, from what I've seen, there has not been any indication that this is all going to a charity or something or whatever, something cool and cute. It all just looks like a little bit of a cash grab um, to kind of, you know, cash in his name, which can be a bit cynical for me to say it because who knows what they agreed to before he passed away this could have been a project they both worked on and he wanted to kind of have Tremaine do anyway under the guise of of Denim Tears and whatnot which looks like now as less of a kind of brand and more so a platform to showcase cool and interesting ideas maybe the same way that Tom Sachs has a Tom Sachs studio which is something I've always kind of wanted to do instead of having just a fashion brand have just a studio where you can just do cool interesting things it just does have to kind of be um it does have to be kind of a. It does have to be kind of restricted to be one thing that can only exist under a label or under a particular kind of theme or whatever it may be or motif. It can be something that can be cover a whole broad spectrum of things, right? From experiences to products to lifestyle, whatever it may be. And um, obviously, he's doing that because he's obviously got his own stuff on here that's obviously doing very, very well and selling like hotcakes. This jacket is fucking hard. Um, but in general, he's also got this stuff that he's also doing. He's also kind of honoring his late friend and whatnot. But I just didn't like it when I saw it, right? And so far, from what I can see, um, it's done pretty well. The hoodies, I think everything sold out from last time I checked. It's kind of done the same way that Virgil did his original Pirates Vision. It's all printed on champion blanks. So depending how you feel about that, but again, it's a kind of a... It's more of an artistic expression and more so a, especially now with Virgil's passing, basically a, a way for you to kind of own a piece of art that's kind of um, linked to his name and his legacy. Um, it's all kind of printed on a champion sweats, like I said, champion, sorry, um, hoodies, taking the nod from how you originally launched them. You've got these great piece of artwork here on the front and then the 45, the 45 there on the back. So Pyrex Tears hoodie says here, $350, um, 26 um, inch, 26 and a half inch length, drawstring, da -da 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 -da, size guide, uh, bar. Also you've got the thing at the back there. And of course, as you can see here, as I put on screen, all the sizes are completely sold out, right? In 350 of the flipping hoodie, which is crazy um, for a champion hoodie, which is bloody nuts. But again, you know, um, if you know anything about about the origins of some of your favorite streetwear brands you would know that a lot of those guys printed on basics and blanks like champion um like beefy uh like triple a like there's loads of things that they kind of printed on back in the day because you couldn't get you couldn't you know get hold of the the blanks any other way the access to manufacturing production wasn't what it was so you just wanted to get your ideas out there so the best way to do is to get the best possible blanks you could get the best possible canvases and then put your logo and brand on top of it and hope people connect with it so there's a pyrex tears again there again the shorts completely sold out i can't imagine wearing a pair of shorts that says pyrex or tears on it it seems like a really really young boy thing to do but a t-shirt's pretty cool i'd imagine that obviously sold out also that's something that i could definitely see myself wearing but again i just feel like it was all done in a bit of poor taste so let's click we read the, the thing for the tea and yeah tea is obviously saying like hot text too with pyrex tears on the front as well this is probably one of my favorite fonts whatever he used when he used pyrex vision i don't know what that font name is called but that's always been lovely i've always kind of really enjoyed that font that virgil did on pyrex vision is the front of it it's always flipping beautiful there the front you know what i mean that print as well is something you don't really see too often in terms of placement for the for a brand name like on either side here so like those those kind of old russian prison tattoos people get that's pretty cool but let's see what the main man himself had to say because i haven't read the interview but tremaine sat down with complex talking about the whole collection and maybe you can kind of shed some light on it and make me feel dumb for doubting the intentions behind him but this is courtesy of complex it says tremaine and we discuss his parrot tears collab and the everlasting impact of virgil abler so let's go down and see what they say it's an interview right so we can go down to the questions so um the first one 
you tease some of the pieces on Instagram that are going to be coming out. What else can you expect from the Pirate Tears drop? He said, three pieces, a t-shirt, shorts and a hoodie. The pieces are made exactly like the old ones were made um, with denim tears and interventions added with the Pirates motif on the champion blanks. We produced 12 flannels using vintage truck <laughs> Uh, this is the cash grab and a half, isn't it? So using the exact same flannels, he originally did them. They, they, that's the only amount we could source. I'm not sure what we're going to do with those. Those won't be for sale. So why are you making them? So you make, huh, anyway, not why you're making them. That's, that's, that's dumb. So that, that is obviously still a great um, piece of art that you can kind of make for yourself. Um, it's a great sort of thing you could add to your overall story. It obviously goes to honoring your friend really well. It starts up a great, interesting conversation. I get it. But obviously someone's gonna own it. You know for sure somebody like a fucking what's his name? What's that absolute donut um, who has to have everything? What's his name? <laughs> um, oh, the Asian dude. You know what I mean? The one that collects blows of stuff. People like that will end up having it for sure. There's some people in the scene who you see always with stuff will definitely end up getting it. It continues. Damn, I was looking forward to rugby. He said, yeah, if we could have found 1,000, if we could have found 500 rugby panels, that's how many we would have made. But it's also an art project. Doing it exactly the same way with intent interventions with, collabor with, in with my interventions uh, with the collaboration. That's what makes it a collaboration. The intervention of the Black Jesus, the intervention of the Tears, the intervention of the 45, that's what makes it a collab. The intervention of an iconography, words, numbers, and imagery. What's this, what's this um, obsession he has with Im intervention? Is this like a thing concerning like... um? His life in general, has he had an intervention or is this something he's just using as a new word? Like, why is this intervention overuse? Um, the, <laughs> it's not even so much an homage. It's more about the return of Virgil, his return to us, his ideas and his family. It's who he was. So that's his afterlife, his ideas, his art, his family. So that's why we're going to collaboration is about my brother. But where's the money going? With a lot of the pieces of Pirate and I don't know why he became known for his art references and graphics he could use. Can you talk about the significance of the painting that you decided to use? This painting I decided to use is a piece I housed at the Art Institute of Chicago. So I imagine it's my fantastical mind that Virgil walked through the place and saw this painting. It is by someone whose last name is Caravaggio because he's a follower of Caravaggio, maybe an apostle or disciple in some way. So he took the last name and painted the same motif, the original Pirates using the bond of Christ. Yeah, I always thought, I remember because I designed a couple of ones. I remember when Pirate Vision came. Out. I designed a couple of hoodies that are done in the same style and the artist I kind of fell in love with that I thought was really good was Bronzino <clears throat> that was the artist that I thought that would be really good to kind of put some of his artwork on a on a hoodie um, off-white style right oh sorry Pirates Vision style when it first came out I remember um, I think there's a Bronzino what version of Christ that I was going to actually print on the hoodie let me see um, that I was going to do as a hoodie which i again end up never doing this is the thing you have to learn from virgil's legacy always ship always make the thing don't just put it on pdfs don't just have it in your brain because i've got it on my flipping external hard drive now my lacy that i can definitely pull out and it's all date stamped and shit you can see from the time that i did it was around the same time virgil did Paris vision but it doesn't matter now because i'm just saying words you know what i mean it doesn't exist in in real life in 3d and i guess if yeah it was this one this is what i was gonna do I was going to have printed on a hoodie at some time. I was going to have it just, uh, I was going to take away the background and have this just printed on the back. So take inspiration from what Virgil did it with his Pyrex hoodie. And then I was going to have some sort of logo, whatever I was going to do in the front. But it's going to be very classic, very simple, very elegant with just this on the back. Kind of screen printed. Obviously take away the background and shit. Um, and this is by, uh, what is it? Uh, Bronzino Christ Nice. I guess as you can see there, there we go. Crucifixion of Christ, sorry. Um, as you can see from Bronzino back in the day, but that's the similar sort of vibe I was going for. Anyway, it continues. He said, Caravaggio, Christ is dead. This one's the resurrection of Christ a few days later. That's why the intervention. Okay, that's why he keeps mentioning intervention. Now we can, because it's tied with the painting. Um, this is why the intervention is the resurrection of Virgil. That's why Christ is black to represent Virgil and his return. <sighs> Don't know about that one, mate. That's a bit mad, isn't it? Saying that Virgil's Christ. I love the guy too. A big inspiration. Met the guy, obviously, like I said you know has spent a very brief time working with him cool i love everything that he did think that he was gone way too soon but you know trying to link him to jesus is absolutely wild but anyway we continue but it's not his return in the flesh it's his return in the memory of his friends and family and his art that's virgil's afterlife that's what the 35 because Michael jordan came back to 35 jumps uh, i get that um What's important for you, the Pyrex, as a vehicle for his project? In popular culture, the first thing Virgil did on his own, no Kanye, no Bin Trill. I don't even think people get it to this day. What do you do? What do you get after you cook up coke in, in Pyrex? You get off white crack rock. Yeah, we know. That's why everyone that's why everyone thinks her name was awesome. I don't think anyone doubts that. If I'm not mistaken, also, didn't flipping um what's the legendary story? Didn't um what's his name? 
didn't uh, ASAP 12 year some, someone give him the name for Off-White Virgil I'm pretty sure that's what the story was right he couldn't end up using Pyrex Vision as a name because Pyrex the whatever the utensils company decided to give him a cease and desist and then he had to then switch to do Off-White or maybe that was always going to come anyway but then he'd get the name Off-White from ASAP 12 I'm pretty sure um he did Pyrex, then Cease and Desist, but it wasn't even about the Cease and Desist. Pyrex was an art project. You cooked up the... No, it wasn't. Because if he didn't get Cease and Desist, he would have kept on going. I love when people change the narrative to fit their story. But I guess, again, I have to I have to be aware that this is something that you I should be doing too. When it comes to arts, when it comes to the creative stuff that I want to do, I have to be cognitive or cognitive that this is the sort of language and the sort of thing that everyone does. They kind of, they kind of, twist, the, they kind of twist their story to fit whatever story they want to tell. So it kind of is similar. It's kind of weirdly made up, but not really made up, because that season assist that came when he was absolutely trying to take the thing to the next level, and then it came and just stopped it. But it was also a good time because he just started doing it, so he could immediately roll into doing off white. You know I mean, he didn't he didn't need to stop and you know I mean figure out stuff. He could immediately just evolve straight away, and it kind of helped him in a general way because he kind of got went straight into doing what he actually wanted to do. Um, but the art projects you could talk Paris and you got off white saving that shit was so layered this high fashion brand named off uh, drugs as a metaphor but also in between the white and black the grey scale is that too um, that's that's obviously true that's a good point I like that one Paris no one ha had ever really seen anything like that before it was definitely for lack of better word streetwear why are they so offended with the term streetwear none of these guys would be having brands if they didn't have the ability to print on t-shirts make hoodies and snapbacks and sweats and stuff so this idea that you you can't say streetwear or streetwear is reductive is nonsense if anything you should be taking the term streetwear and trying to elevate it to the same level that high fashion with a capital h and an f actually have at the moment even though that stuff is only cool because the people on the street the working class folk the normal folk are the ones making it cool i, I, I hate this kind of resistance to streetwear it's so dumb it's a thing that combined what is called streetwear and crashed it with a bunch of other things. What is streetwear? Question mark. Streetwear doesn't exist. Oh, all right, cool. To you, it doesn't because you're flipping one of the privileged food that gets fucking everything. Do you know what I mean? But you work for a fucking streetwear brand. That's what Supreme is now. It's not a skateboarding brand, you would imagine. It's definitely more of a streetwear brand. Where do you see most of the stuff being worn that people wear from Supreme? In the street. Do they wear it in the street in a skateboarding way? No, they wear it in a streetwear way. Anyway, what do I know? There's couture, ready to wear, and athletic wear, so I don't personally really use the word streetwear because of the connotations of a lot of people that use it. But I understand what people do feel good about the word streetwear. It's a tricky word. It's like the word urban. Not really. Streetwear is nothing like urban at all. Urban has a direct connotation to be it being a bunch of kids doing breakdancing in the Bronx somewhere with a fake graffiti backdrop. You know what I mean, all well, that sort of stuff pertaining to DJ. Um, streetwear is exactly what it is on a tin. It is hoodies. It is t-shirts, it is jeans, it is sneakers, it's baseball caps. Like that's what streetwear is all about. It's probably even toys connected to it. Like that is streetwear, quintessentially. It's not anything else. It's not anything bad. It's not anything beneath anyone. It's cool. It's probably cooler than most of the stuff out there, especially stuff like fashion. That's, you know, seasonal, based on trends, um, very political. Um, you know, it's not the most egalitarian scene um, in the world yeah i mean like i don't know and it continues was pyrex tears something that you and virgil were working on or discussing before he passed it there was a conversation between me and alaska um and i was approved by shannon Ablo. see <laughs> of course not it was approved by shannon Ablo, the wife so fair but there was nothing tied into virgil and we haven't heard so far no approach of anything concerning this stuff being made and then the proceeds going to a good cause it's just obviously to line people's pockets which is is what it is but i'm happy that i had my stance in the beginning that i didn't fuck with it because i thought it was really gross and really in bad taste with it not being even a year since the guy's passed but you know it's his friend so he can do what he wants i guess the 10th anniversary of paris is approaching what is significance of alexia Paris paris vision to you diy man are you going to let them tell you you're an artist or are you going to choose to be an artist are you going to wait for them to tell you you're a designer or are you going to know when you've done your one ten thousand hours and you're ready to go into the world and present your ideas which i love i love that because i was just speaking about it now with my djing thing and about how i've become way too closeted and shy about presenting myself and pushing myself out there but in general if i say i'm ready i'm say i'm the man i'm the man but i then obviously got to prove and put that stuff out there and obviously hope that the universe then connects with my um, energies in terms of what i'm putting out there and something happens even if it doesn't the fact that i'm actually putting it out there is already a win because i'm spent so much of my life having all my ideas on here this is where all my ideas used to exist, right? All on here, on this lazy drive. 
ideas upon ideas, stuff that was never materialized, but now I'm changing for the better. So I love that message that he's cooking up there. Cooking up, get it? Pyrex off white. And it continues. Pyrex was just get was just was just him going for it. The video, the presentation, Jim Joe spray painting on a wall, the, the Joy Division song, ASAP Mob to model it. It's art. He spun an art project into being a commercial project, but there was no guarantee that Pyrex would turn into the uh, what it would mean to everyone now. So Pyrex shows the possibilities that when you believe in yourself and do things that way, you want to do them. Pyrex is a combination of the streets, and I don't mean streetwear. Oh, again, with this, the rejection of streetwear, man, it's pissing me off. But again, let the guy cook in it. I mean the hood, the rap, the hip-hop, the mix, the art, um, showing that it's all the same shit. Caravaggio is no better than fucking DJ Premier. They're both artists. It's not on a higher level. I guess you want to make sure that your heroes are placed on the same level as some of these other heroes, but there's no need to compare people all the time and try to place them on this sort of like comparative level. It just is a bit reductive and a bit simplistic, really, in my opinion. Um, it just is, and probably not not warranted or not needed. You can easily tell the story of DJ Premier without even mentioning fucking... Um, what you call it, Caravaggio, in my opinion. Um, well, um, sorry, they're both artists. It's not one as high level. DJ Premier is no better than Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is no better than Caravaggio. Um, we'll put them all together on a hoodie. It changed everything. He unified the disciplines. He unified the separation created by the 1% that wants to tell you that you, a Picasso is worth more than a Frank Ocean album because there's only one Picasso and everyone can buy a Frank Ocean's album. Are you... Tr on, I'm triggered now because Picasso is one of my favorite artists of all time. And I studied him in school when I did art. And I've bought loads of books about him and I've gone to see many exhibitions about him. To try and attribute or to link what Frank Ocean does to Picasso is just... Okay, anyway, let's continue. Um, it's not more worth more. It's just about made-up validation indexes. Frank Ocean's Blonde album is just as valid as Picasso. Vice versa. What pi oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's these things that people say in the scene that just don't make any sense in it, really. Because I don't think even hardcore Frank Ocean fans would even say Blonde is even his best album. So you can sit there and talk because it's conceptual and everything that it represents and the fucking the thing that he built with it and the magazine. I get, I get it. There's a lot of things that tied in with it. The guy's very artistic, very creative. He's doing incredible things with his with his jewelry brand at the moment. He's clearly a consummate creative in that respect. I'm sure behind the scenes he has incredible conversations. Really. Um, plugged in crewed up guy which is the best movies and so the best music has a great furniture great style i get it but can we relax relax with the frank ocean thing can we relax a little bit too relax a little bit like he still divides opinion generally he still has a very niche audience generally he still doesn't put out music on that consistent basis generally the music quality standards aren't that isn't that good generally across the board and blonde isn't his best album let's just put that out there probably color oranges right um, maybe the the mixtape. What's the mixtape with the fucking car in the front? Like, I don't know. So sorry, sorry, color orange, channel orange, color orange. I said, didn't it? It continues. Um, uh, I'm not gonna read all that stuff. I don't care. You said you sourced them, but you decided you wanted to. Work. Yeah. So same way. You said it was hard to source them, but you said that you decided that you wanted to do it the same way he did at the time and source these Vinci Raffler and rugby's. At the time when he did that, there was people that dismissed the creation because he was essentially just printing on flannels at the time. That would think, what would you think his opinion? What would, what what did you think of that opinion and those critics? He says, I'll tell you. I told a story at Harvard. I did a talk with IDK and Virgil at Harvard a couple of months before he died. There was these guys that started this brand called Nike. They didn't have the means to go to China and America and make sneakers on the ground up. So you know what they did? They bought on it Soga Tigers, ripped off the patch, put on a Nike patch, and that's how Nike started. That's my answer. But also, the issue that I had, again, that's a good answer to put out there. It's a cool, snappy answer. It's going to get you some claps. But the reality of it is, at the time that Virgil was putting, again, this is somebody that respects Virgil, honors the guy. I have plenty of videos about him on, his, on my channel. I was cut up and I'm still upset that he flipping passed away that he did. And I feel like, you know, he was gone way too soon and didn't get his flowers and he, when he was around. I feel like everybody that was going around trying to suck him off after he died were disrespectful to his legacy and just gross in general. So I'm a huge fan of Virgil. It's coming from a fan, an obsessive Obsessive fan, somebody that decided to work for the company that I worked for when I decided when I had to the the a person who decided to work for the company that I ended up working for because I knew he was going to work with them. So that's how much of a fan I was. I I am still at the time. Huh? But let's be honest. At the time Virgil was doing Pike's Vision, he was doing this thing where a lot of them were doing hair and press and this sort of thing, where they were sort of infantilizing 
their audience like calling them kids right and also trying to make themselves look way older which they're not that older really right i think virgil maybe was the oldest one but they're kind of like you know between what mid 30s early 40s but they were try at the time they're maybe like in their 30s but they were trying to make this separation like they were like the big brothers and they were like trying to do it for the kids do it for the culture do it for the kids and i think that was around the time everyone was using the term culture 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 but i remember there was a term there was a time when they were obsessed about saying kids 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 which was dumb because a lot of the kids that they were talking to a lot of the kids that they were envisioning weren't the kids that were going to be able to afford what they make because they don't have disposable income. But again, we just move on. But that was the idea behind it. We're doing it for kids, doing it for the kids. Then he launches his brand and he puts out flannels that are $600, right? And then it's not even like the flannels that are made cut and sew wise. At the time, streetwear people were making cut and sew garments. They were actually going to manufacturers at the time. You could have gone to Alibaba. You could have gone to factories in China. You could have got stuff done in, in the US it's at the time, even in 2012, right? That was possible to do. But before it wasn't. But back in then, strand brands were still doing that. So already elevating. So to just go and get rugby flannels that already been made, essentially create an artificial bit of scarcity by buying the entire stock then print on them and then sell them for what seven times their retail value or maybe 10 times retail value was essentially insane and really did a disservice to him because at the time also Pyrex was kind of tilted as a streetwear brand but then you're coming in on the market trying to sell flannels for six hundred dollars which is nuts no brand does that even the brands that sell you know some of the brands that do like diamond tea stuff and are into rip denim stuff and do that kind of asap bari you know um streetwear hobo look thing some of those brands wouldn't sell you a flannel for seven hundred or six hundred dollars so the fact that he thought that was a good idea probably wasn't the greatest idea at the time because it definitely kind of i felt like put him in a bad light especially to myself especially somebody i was working at with him at the time i remember when i was working on that streetwear course a lot of the people who went to get involved didn't want to get involved with him because of that whole kerfuffle with pyrex vision it's funny because those same people that didn't want to be associated with him were also the first people that kind of jump out of the window and say how much they meant he meant to him or that sort of fake nonsense like industry stuff is horrible i saw it first time with virgil and it like I'm, i emailed these same people and asked them to get involved this project and they all said no and then the moment he became hot like shit grease you know everybody decided to kind of you know jockey him and stuff but he was good about that and he didn't seem to care about it he seemed to take it all in his grace so big up him and big up his legacy but that was the reason why it was gross you try to become the bastion of the children and all that good stuff. Uh, and in the first brand you put out, you're putting out $600 flannels with flannels that you didn't make. You're just screaming on the back of them. Like that obviously isn't the greatest thing to do. I don't think, and the fact that no one else has done that goes to prove how distasteful and how bad it was because no one else has repeated what he did. No one else has gone out and tried to buy a $10 fucking jumper, tried to resell it for $100 to just put their logo on the front. No one does that because they know it's not going to go down very well. So this idea that it was... Um, they, we just didn't get it and all that sort of stuff and Nike did on it's just come on let's just call it spade a spade it was a bad idea it obviously worked out in the long term in terms of what you're doing but you know whatever um, what's the significance of the phrase sunroof on the Trojan horse to you so the sunroof on the Trojan horse were most of Brandy that Virgin our tribe myself included people of color and women and other subjugated people had used to infiltrate the white male infrastructure of the western society that's been running the world for a couple of thousand years <laughs> i love this i love this energy i love because i'll just get right behind it even if i don't agree with it i'll just stand behind it just so i can get a chance to get involved so anyway it continues we had to use the trojan horse to get in we have we have these watershed moments of him becoming the creative director of louis vuitton his museum shows the nikes the clothing the films all of it that's when the sunroof pops open like hey we're here we had to sneak in but we're here now and more of us are coming in that's what sunroof on a trojan horse means we're letting the fucking top down on this bitch no more hiding no more sneaking our friends in no more any of that fully us fully black i love this fully trans fully gay fully lesbian fully whatever you are fully you you're just as visible as anyone else we deserve the same opportunities and we also deserve to be mediocre be great and it's oh i love this line at the end we also deserve to be mediocre be great the same things that white people male structure has always been for so long and i definitely agree with that because i think there's a clip at the moment of viola davis talking about how difficult it is just to be like a black creative right? you have to kind of be so much better than your peers and so much better than everybody else just to get a sniff you can't just be mediocre you can't rely on nepotism because you don't have anybody to bring you in and you can't just rely on just being okay you have to be more than okay just to get a shot but in general it's good because it makes you far better it makes you like that's probably why Virgil is so good because it makes you far better it makes you far ready when you get your opportunity you're ready to go you're store ready 
you're retail ready um you're industry ready you're scene ready you're not just like uh oh, underground person no, no no you're ready to go because you've been working at it for time don't forget Virgil's first self program in the french house that's in 2018 that's crazy Duh. uh what's going on here Oh, this is the article Virgil stuff. Uh, since Virgil's passing, many people have been talking about who you're feeling about LV. If you had the power to choose um, either a specific person or the art direction, what would you want to see a Virgil continue legacy? What do you what, what would you do? He says, if you think anyone, if you think the continue, no, if anyone thinks the continuation of Virgil's legacy is that Louis Vuitton, you're sorely wrong. The continuation of his legacy is his wife, his mum, his sister, his dad, his kids, his friends, his art. Louis Vuitton was just a brand that was very lucky to have him. Nike is just a brand that was very lucky to have him. True. So this is no successor. Congratulations to whoever comes after Virgil, but it's really not my concern. Louis Vuitton wasn't the whole thing. It was a step on the chessboard um the sunroof is off we use louis we use these things as a leverage to push through for example the sunroof on the trojan horse is me getting job at supreme true me and my job at supreme doesn't happen if there wasn't a watershed moment the virgins happened in 2018 i don't care how tired or how good i am very self-aware and i love that kind of energy to be honest because we have to be true a lot of those people that were around his orbit were able to essentially propel their careers into the stratosphere based on what he was able to do and based on the good kind of um grace that he kind of emanated from people in the industry and just their willingness to take chances because they saw him doing so successful like someone like harry impression who i've met a few times myself and i'm a fan of from afar but you would never say for my opinion i would never say impression was a fashion dude so for him to be able to take what he does and his talent of communication and putting ideas out there to take that into a fashion realm and absolutely smash it the only reason he was given the opportunity in the first place to kind of present on that kind of level was what Virgil was doing and obviously him being hey this is my boy I'm going to bring him in and then, then be like cool we want another person we don't want to miss out on another Virgil they bring him in boom and then it goes from flipping you know it goes out of the it goes to flip to the flipping moon so clearly that is something that he's they're all aware of which is fucking awesome to see and again that guy's legacy is amazing, right? To have all these people talking so glowingly about you um, and about the impact that you've had on other people's lives and about the impact you've had on their lives and their career and the fact that you're continuing a legacy by just being alive and doing your thing, that is the best way to be honored, honestly. There's, uh, anyway, it continues. There's this, um, there's things that happened before Virgil that helped him get to his point too. It's true. Things that Ye did, things that um, Charles Casely Hayford did. Oh, awesome to say that, mention that name because that's a legend people don't really mention too often. Didn't he pass away recently? I'm sure, right? And Joe Casely Hayford, um, sorry, he, the dad passed away. Am, am, I, am I mistaken? Or am I talking out of turn here? I'm um, sorry, this is the dad, right? Didn't he pass away, unfortunately? Because they used to do fashion together. I remember seeing the kid around London a lot when I was at CSM and whatnot. Or oh, my bugging. Yeah, he passed away, right? Yeah. I saw this guy a lot often, man. Joe Casely Hayford, British fashion designer. Um, Joe, Joe Casey was a British fashion designer. Um, beginning in the 1980s, he established his national reputation. He was appointed officer of the board of the British Empire Service in the fashion industry. Um, when he died in 2019 Jesus I didn't know it was that far behind uh, uh, on 2019 Casey died following a three year battle with cancer and yeah and he's doing his brand with his, with his son a lot that was really cool and touching to see those pictures of them together actually um, father and son um, Casey Hayford working together on tailoring and whatnot. you know shop there on Savile Row and shit like absolutely epic shit to see so all this stuff definitely laid the, laid the framework for every, what everyone's doing now and how everyone's popping and bursting through so cool to see him mentioning those names what and Andre Walker did what, Will, what Willie Smith did what Nina Simone did these are all things that led to what Virgil done your mentors aren't only the people you know so what I'm saying is the end game isn't Louis V it's not the highest point it's to move on the chessboard and so it doesn't matter who comes after very good for them <laughs> I love this energy <laughs> But really what matters is the legacy left in his family, his friends, his art, his true brand is Virgil Abloh, not Off-White, not Louis Vuitton, not Likey. And that's the part I think people are missing. That's why it isn't an Off-White collab. It's, an Louis, it's not a Louis Vuitton collab. It's a Virgil thing. Louis owned 100% of Virgil. I love that. To clarify, I wasn't insinuating legacy. We continue LV. I was more to asking a uh, hope. Is as far, I was, I was <laughs> the guy got nervous. <laughs> Oh, he got scared I was more so asking what your hope is for as far as what LV does to follow up he says I, I totally understand we got to keep it real LV did what they LV did that because they had to what was the other move we run this shit that's why exactly <laughs> I think I said at the time when Virgil got the job at Louis, I was like it's great that he got it but it, yeah, people acting I was like this is a surprise what else are they meant to do the guy is hotter than fucking fish grease he's everywhere 
I mean, he's got the fucking Kanye rub. He's got his own rub. He's flipping, doing a million projects at the same time. Fucking collections out of the fucking ass. You know what I mean? Fashion shows that are turning into fucking concerts and places to be seen and moving units and selling shit tons. Like, what, what else are they meant to do? Do you know what I mean? They had to get him on board. Anyways, it continues. It said, that's why I said his legacy isn't attached to LV. It was a job. It's a high profile job. It's like Phoebe Philo. Her legacy isn't attached to Celine or Phoebe Philo. Yeah, she did a great job at Celine, but she's a great designer. Is Michael Jacobs' legacy attached to Louis Vuitton? People don't even talk about that anymore. He's a great artist and a designer. There's kids that don't even know that Mark Jacobs work at Louis Vuitton and it doesn't matter because he's still great. Yeah, he's stuff that he's doing now with heaven. Um, it's still an amazing person. It's the same with V. Any final thoughts? I'd like to thank... <laughs> <laughs> it's a big Alaska Alaska Shannon Abler for allowing me to really to collaborate with my dearly departed friend the whole point of the whole collaboration is no virgins of after life is that uh, life with family his friends and art continue to live the people that lived his art so I hope people who really love you didn't know him will get to enjoy the product because that's what it presents so you know maybe I'm in the wrong here maybe it's not like he did it in very small numbers it was meant to be something he did just to kind of honor the legacy of his friend. Um, it's definitely spurned some good conversations, a good talking points here. He spoke with a lot of passion and heart regarding himself and his connection with his friend. And like I said, as somebody that worked with the guy and knew him, knew him to that level. And obviously was a, a real big fan of what he did and was kind of, you know, watching from afar and kind of being inspired and motivated from afar. I can definitely see why this could kind of resonate with some people going forward, but still, I will still maintain that I still think it's kind of done in poor taste personally for me just in terms of the timing I feel like if it would have done it in terms of a one year anniversary again things are really it's really subtle how things can be seen and represent and, and presented and how they can look but if this is done on the actual one year anniversary of the person's death and there's something to tie in with it that isn't just dropping off clothes and there's a longer story to tell and I don't know there's other bits of bad here and you're talking about setting up foundations I don't know then it sounds then it can kind of be a little bit easier to take but when you're just giving me clothes and just printing stuff on it and just trying to justify that 600 dollar final i don't know man it just feels like a bit of a cash grab to me but hey what do i know regardless the interviews fucking bomb when the rest of the stuff drops buy it um honor his legacy that way i mean and make sure these ideas keep permeating through because i just want to see more people that look like me in those positions anyway and the only way to do that is to keep buying these products and keep flipping dunking on them and keep putting your foot on their necks and not taking it off there anytime soon any time soon.